The behind the scenes of the build of the of the Viking shelter of the Viking house. Today's plan is to build the beds. So last time, last week, we built the benches. What we're going to be building today are the beds. So we've split. Basically, if this is the, the the log, we've split like that to create one, and then two. So what we need is three per bed. So here's one. Just needs a bit of tidying up. Because uh, there's a few shavings, there's a few splinters in there, and the idea is for the bed to be positioned along this wall. So there's the fire. So we'd have one bed there, and then another bed on that side. So we really need three planks, one, two, three, next to each other, raised off the ground. That means that we can store, for example, we can use underneath as like wood storage, and. Um, and Mike's dad, Graham, he's been he's been splitting lots of wood today. So perfect for the for under the beds. This would be for the wood storage. Yeah, you always need when you're in the woods, when you're at your bushcraft camp, you always need wood. Split wood, cut wood, lengths of wood, seasoned wood for burning. Always. It saves you from walking everywhere to try and find wood and work out what's dry, what's wet, and having to cut things down. If you can always keep on top of it, it's much, much easier. It's so much easier having split wood, dried wood, ready to use for fire lighting. Do you think when you you should store these with a the bark peeled off, or like this? Or? Uh, probably peeled off because I guess it'll dry even it'll quicker. It'll burn better. They'll, they'll dry quicker. Because you don't need to cook with the bark, do you? Know? You almost need to peel it before you chop it. Fire. So I'm going to go right down the middle just to try it differently. You know, we went down the edge last time. Yeah. I'm going to go right down the middle. Okay, yeah. Split the whole log in two and then get, do it the other way. Try it that way. Well, as you can see, we're not professionals, but we're really giving it a good go. And we're learning so much from doing this. So we're using pegs, these hazel pegs. And just by making a wedge with the hazel peg, we can then bang the pegs into the cracks that we've made with the axe. And you can see here on the front, yeah, it's not perfect, but that means we just put the axe there and we follow that along and then we trim it up. Everything is pretty much just done with a few saws, a few axes, and a bit of uh, a bit of will, a bit of elbow grease. Yeah, plenty of elbow grease. No one said it'd be easy, but it'd definitely be worth it by the end of it. Maybe try this. So it, di it didn't quite go to plan splitting that. So we're going to flip it over and see if we can see if we can rescue it somehow. There we go, look at that. These pegs we're using, every so often they'll go a bit blunt on the end. So what we do is we just we just give them a little shaving with the axe and it brings them back to life. Well, while they're working away, I think I might prepare some food. So food-wise, we're going to have fried potatoes and steak sandwiches. Maybe steak and cheese sandwiches. With a twist. So these potatoes have just cut up. I'm going to put them in this little billy can. 
then we're going to boil them over. We're going to parboil them over the fire. Add a bit of extra, add a bit of salt. Always add salt when you're boiling. We're going to fry them on the skillet once these are parboiled. There we are. There's the beginning of our log pile, our log store. So there's a the skillet. We're going to be frying the potatoes on. I'm only doing this for pictures. Yeah. Two like that, one there. I'm going to bash this steak out if you're interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Right, so I said we're going to have steak sandwiches with a twist. So we've got two of these steaks. I'm going to just wrap them with this baking paper. And then using this wooden mallet, what this will do is just spread them a bit bigger, a bit flatter. And uh, you, kind of, you kind of make them a bit bigger. So that, that's the idea. And this is how I'm going to do it. Dad, can you just have a break a minute just while I... And now you can see it's flattened and it's become much wider and thinner as well and also it does uh, it makes it a little bit more tender. So we've done one just just over there and this is the second one. And look how big they go. It's huge. So these potatoes, they should be parboiled. Let me just check with my knife. If I can get my knife out of my sheath. No, I can't. Hold on. All right, All right. So I'm just going to check the potatoes. Yep, perfect. Nice and parboiled. The skillet's over the flame. It's nice and hot. I've just poured some oil in there, and I can see the oil looks like it's quite hot already. So now it's time to get rid of the water, put the potatoes on, leave them a few minutes, get some colour. Once they're cooked, put the steaks on, they'll only take a minute or two and then it's time to um then time for lunch really. So these are the potatoes and off camera I didn't film this but I've cut up some sausages as well and we fried them. So they're the what we have right here is potatoes and sausages and some Texas mixed herbs, which is uh, this herb mix that I got really nice, it's quite peppery as well. Great for steaks, but I just normally put on everything because it makes everything taste great. And then to go with that, this is what we have. So we've got some flatbreads, as I was saying earlier on. We've got a bit of salad, some onions to put into the flatbread, along with our steak. Once we've cooked our steak off, we're going to put it onto this board, cut it down into, into more or less triangles or half moons that will fit into the flatbread. And then we've got some mayonnaise here. This is um, it's going to be our dipping sauce. We've got mayonnaise, we've got hot paprika or smoked paprika even. And there's also more of the Texas, so this is what I use, it's actually Danish. Um, so for those that don't know, I'm actually half Danish, but we'll keep that quiet. No, I'm only joking, I I'm proud of that. So yeah, that's my Texas spread, or my Texas mix. And then I've got here some smoked garlic, off cam again, I put it in the edge of the fire. And if you guys could smell this, it smells incredible. What am I going to do with it? Well, I'm going to squeeze out the very soft paste, the very soft, so you can see how soft this is. Squeeze it out. Mix it into this and it'll become an incredible dipping sauce to go with our steak, cheese, flatbread -y things. Oh my god, that is basically it. And um, right, I need to put the camera down now and crack on before I burn everything. So here's the garlic paste that I've just squeezed into the mix. And I'm going to mix it around and that become a lovely dip. Well, once again, we're in the woods, lunch is served. This is what we have. So we've got flatbreads. And the idea is that you just help yourself. It's kind of finger food. We do have water over there. We've got a jug of water, so we're all able to wash our hands as, uh, as best as we can. So yeah, it's just finger food. Fill up your flatbread. You know, you could throw a few potatoes in there if you want. It wasn't really the plan, but um, why not? Maybe some salad as well. So a couple of these leaves, maybe some onion. And just to finish it off, we don't have a spoon today because I've kind of forgotten it, but just some of this lovely dip that I've made that I just talked to you guys through. So this is our lunch. It's these Moroccan style flatbreads. We've got some lovely steak with the Texas seasoning, some red onion salad and this dip. And I can't wait to get my teeth into this. Oh, oh so good, so good. I might sit down and let you guys enjoy it. The cameraman wants to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> right, well I'm on to my second one. 
And uh, Mike's just tucked into his first one. It's good, man. It's good. I'm finishing the first one. Are you finishing the first one? How was that? Was that good? Tasty? It would have been if you put the cheese in it. But I, know, <laughs> I know you kept all the cheese. I totally in forgot to put the cheese in it. Yeah. <laughs> and these potatoes, great finger food as well. Mm. Just um, sausages, probably. <laughs> a bit of dip. Oh yeah, so good. Mm. Once again, cooking good in the woods. By the way, guys, if you like these bowls. You can see these bowls, that's Spalted Beach. I can't remember what that one is, or that one, or that one. I've made so many bowls, but if anyone wants to see me do a little video on some bowl turning, then comment below and you never know, maybe I'll do a video. So one thing you guys probably don't realise is that there's a lot of the time when we have to stop filming and just wait for the noise to go. There's so much activity in the air around here. There's an air base, I think there's a military air base not far, maybe 10, 20, 30 miles away. But it's close enough to hear every single helicopter and military plane that flies over. And that is what you guys don't see in Mike's videos. So now we're waiting for the noise we've got things to do like we've got this log this is um, for the bed you'll see it shortly on Mike's video what exactly we're doing with it but the point is we have to wait stop and wait quite a few times for the noise to go there's too many helicopters in this country and there we go there's another helicopter somewhere over there what do you guys think of the sawhorse? I think it looks great. It's a great effort. Mike did the majority of the work and it works really well. It's a really good, really good sawhorse. Put logs on there, saw them down for firewood. Brilliant. So we've had lunch, we're just waiting for the kettle. Another cup of tea, true Englishman style. Cup of tea and then back to work. So these are the legs for the bed and they're actually quite hard drilling into. It is. Aren't they, Mike? It is. I think because we're going through the end grain as opposed to through the, the side of the wood. Obviously, we're right in the, the centre there. There's a knot here as well. And I'm having to... Usually, you don't need to put your weight on an auger. It does it for it. But I'm having to put my weight on it just to get this to bite into the wood. Well, I think I might just have another one. Thank you very much. So, you've probably heard we're using bark for the roof. How are we going to do it? Well, by peeling the bark from the cedar lot from the cedar logs you can quite easily so you can quite easily peel the bark away just by getting your finger in and on this one I've done one side already and I'm just working my way around the bottom of it and what happens is it basically you what you want to do is you want to free up the wood from the bark or should I say free the bark from the wood sometimes you need a little tool tool wise so I've got this it's just a it's just a stick that I put a point on and you can quite easily, actually not quite easily, it's quite difficult sometimes, you can get this in and just prise the bark away from the wood. So you can see it's kind of we just opened it up, we've just opened up the log, revealing the wood from the bark, and it's this bark that we're going to be using to tile the roof. So I think I've freed it up. Now I need to remove this log, lift it up away from the bark so I can pull the bark out from underneath it. So that's quite a big area already to use as a bark roof. Hey guys, we've got a nice one here. Oh, lovely. Yeah. You got it up or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll find the ones that have been on the ground for a bit longer. Make sure the wet The bark soaked up the. Just need another 20 of them. It's going to be hard work. No one said it would be easy, but we've learned a lot. And you know what? I'd rather take my time, do some hard work, learn a lot from it, than to rush it and regret it. There's no rush for this thing to go up. 
there's no rush at all. So, oh, dropped, dropped my phone. Uh oh. So, to start it off, I've just peeled a small strip, and you do this, and eventually it kind of just peels off and breaks, and then you start again. So, once you've done that all the way along, you can then quite simply get in and gradually ease the bark away from the wood. Look. And through the opposite side, like that. Where there's knots, it's tricky where there's knots. So you really have to be careful, otherwise you end up ripping it. So I just lost my stick I was using to prise away the bark from the wood. Um, so I might have to I might have to find another piece of wood and make it make one. So any old piece of wood really. Seems to work well with a curved piece of wood. And then if the curves that way, I tend to using my knife. Just put a bit of a, a flat end on one side, like this. There's a knot on there. So something like this. You don't want it really sharp on the end because you'll end up digging through and cutting through the bark. So just, just like this, so it's got a flat end on it, perfect. So these are really useful when it comes to trying to work the bark away from the knots because the knots is where the bark seems to want to cling and stick to. Just makes life a little easier. So you can see it comes away really nicely, occasionally. Where these knots are, yeah, there will be a few holes, but there's going to be lots of holes in all the bark we peel off. It's just a matter of taking your time when it comes to building it and just patching it, making sure those holes are patched with another piece of bark. It could even be a small piece of bark. But that's the whole thing about using natural materials. You're going to struggle, but you're also going to find ways around the problems that you find or the problems that you come across. And there we are. So this will probably, we'll probably split this down the middle so there's two lengths. And the way it's gonna go on, it's gonna go on like this. We're gonna start at the bottom and work our way up. So this could be one layer. The next layer goes on top of that, slightly overlapping. So any rain will run onto this and it'll run all the way down onto the ground. Hopefully not into the shelter. Right, so that's about it for today. We've we've done quite a lot. We've built, we finished off another bench. We've built a bed. We've peeled lots of bark. We've eaten some good food. Um, we've made a firewood store. I haven't filmed that much today. I've kind of we've really been cracking on and trying to do as much as we can. And yeah, we've probably got bark-wise, we've probably got enough for about a quarter of the roof only. It's going to take another two or three days with all three of us working on the bark in order to, to get enough bark to complete the roof. But you know what, it probably is, it probably was a good idea to, to complete the inside, to make all those little features, the benches, the table, the fire pit, the this and the that, before putting the roof on. Because with the roof on, one, it's going to restrict our movement inside when it comes to making things. Two, it won't be very good for filming. And I use a camera phone, it's absolutely rubbish when it comes to this, this sort of light. In fact, I'm probably, you probably can't even see me. 
Um, but yeah, it's probably really grainy. My camera phone isn't the best. Should I invest in a new camera? Uh, maybe one day, but not yet. But not yet. I think maybe I'll get to a substantial amount of subscribers before I realise it's worth investing in a good camera. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button and I'll be back next time. Not sure when, but it'll definitely be another irregular upload. Until then, see you next time.